This, this is me. For those of you wondering, I put myself into this position. You see, a few months ago, I decided I wanted to start my own CNC plasma cutting business. And instead of buying a CNC plasma machine that someone else made, I decided to build my own. I've had my fair share of ups. And downs. Oh, that sucks. I was not freaking watching where I was going. But in the process, I've learned a lot. And today, I'm finally setting it up in my home shop and putting the last of the <laughs> homie, homie touches. touches. Definitely gonna leave the water pan and the grate out until I can until I get some time to transfer that electrical box to the front. I started by rearranging my home shop and centering all of my space around the plasma cutter because this is where I imagine I will be spending most of my time. Okay, so we got here kind of just a little circle set up or square. Leave some extra room in there for some steel storage later on that I should be able to get to easily close to the plasma cutter. But yeah, I still got to store my boat in there in the summer and then the trailer on the other side. So that's already pretty tight. And I do have, I don't know where I'm going to put it, but I actually have some pallet racking for more storage. It's, I think they're 10 foot tall. So it ain't going in here, but. If I could go back in time, I would have put this in front of the machine when I first put it on. Honestly, I don't know what I was thinking. I'm gonna have to redo all these wiring harnesses once my drag chain comes in. They're not long enough. I was lucky that I didn't weld anything together, which I was really debating whether or not to do that because it would have been much easier and faster. But this bolt together system came in handy. All I had to do was remove the four bolts holding the cabinet in place and carry it over to the other side. To reattach the control cabinet, I grabbed a spare 2x4 and placed it underneath to elevate the box to prevent unwanted ground contact. Then, since the pilot holes were already there, I just... Boom. <laughs> I apologize, but... When you're working, sometimes you don't want to record everything, so you have a limited amount of footage. And sound effects at that. Okay guys, with me today, I got an air dryer. What the hypotherm manual said is that one of the main causes for bad consumables is dirty or wet air. They had a few cheaper ones, but I really didn't want to get anything cheaper. This one was, uh, I think I bought it like 120 bucks. Once I had the air dryer hooked up, it was time to give her the first official test run at the home shop. Hopefully, nothing got damaged during shipping. Okay, I'm hitting play. That's not good. I don't know what happened. Was there not enough air? Everything says it's fine. Um, let's try it again. Okay, I don't know why I did that at first, but... All right, now I don't want to be that guy because literally every guy ever that's made a CNC plasma cutter, they cut their first piece and then they flip it over and they're like, wow, very minimal draws. Look at that, I mean, it just comes off with a fingernail, or if I drop it really hard. Wow. No, there's a lot of draws on that. I showed you guys the hypertherm and the Messer system that I was running at work. There's almost nothing, non-existent. So that's what I'm going off of, but use consumables and a bunch of other different factors that are gonna affect that speed. I'm happy with that. That can be chipped off or ground off, so good stuff. So going back to the small air problem, I'm 90% sure the first test run didn't work because the 25 foot cord wasn't purged with the cutting gas. So on initial start, it probably threw an error. And what you just saw being cut out there was the new drag chain ways. I just purchased these from Amazon and I thought I'd double check the dimensions before I had the first ones made, but nothing fit. A lot of the JD plasma cutters I've seen, everyone has all the wires dangling from a pipe 
that's just sticking straight up in the air. To me, I, I just think that looks super unprofessional and like you didn't put any thought into it. Now, the moment is true. It fits. The next step was trying to figure out how to mount these things. I started by laying both drag chains out and testing out the wires where I thought they would be best routed. I went back and forth on a few design concepts and whether or not I should make the mounting brackets out of steel or 3D print them. I ended up going with the 3D prints. It's lighter and quicker for me to prototype. Okay, print is finished. I ran out of black so I had to switch over to white, but that opening is now expanded. Let's go see how it does. That mounting bracket was actually my third iteration, meaning I made two others prior and they both ended up not working out. I think I was just getting excited at seeing the finished product and I was just trying to rush. But once I got it figured out, I think it turned out all right. Here I'm just drilling a few holes in the drag chain ways, then dropping in some 1024 bolts and nuts to secure the bottom of the Okay, drag, drag chain. chain setup is in and working well. I just need to get some other cable ties to basically secure the part where the drag chain is not going. So probably down here somewhere. Get it out of the way of the other stepper. Bolt there, there probably, and same thing for this guy, but I think the 3D printed parts worked really well. We'll see how long they hold up, but everything clears and I got the max reach. I, eh, unfortunately, like I said before, I will have to redo most of these um, wiring harnesses from the steppers to make them longer. I made them too short to feed through all the cables because originally I was going to go with something that hung, but that looks very unprofessional. So let's see what I can do here. Finally, we get to this beast of a water pan. Just so everyone knows, do not make a pan this big out of 7 gauge material. It's way too heavy. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm willing to bet this thing was probably around like 110 pounds. As for the drain I'm rolling on here, I just kept it super simple. I have a 3 quarter inch black pipe coupler I welded to the bottom of the pan. Then I attached a brass shut off. No need for a flush mount drain because I welded it on the bottom. Everything on the top is already all flush. That is, of course, assuming I could weld flux core correctly. Okay, I pretty much got everything installed now. I'm gonna go ahead and get a bucket, throw it in there and see how she does, look for any leaks and then patch it up. Okay, my phone's almost dead. I got the bucket. The whole table is slanted left. I'm gonna have to get some uh, casters and leveling feet or make some to jack this side up and make the whole table level, but I'm just curious to see what this does. And I know I'm supposed to put some antibacterial stuff in here and whatnot. I don't think I see any leaks yet, which I mean, it's not that surprising. I welded it after all. <laughs> I found the first leak right on the floor there. I don't know if it's coming from the weld or the actual coupling because I did not put any Teflon tape on. I just tightened it hand tight. So I'm going to try to tighten back up and see what happens. Okay, I lied. It is coming from the weld. Just a small drip on this side. So rather than take this whole table out and re-weld that, which I will do on the next change out whenever this water gets dirty, I'm going to go ahead and drain what's ever in there and then take a bead of silicone and put it around the inside. That's new. I let this sit overnight and already starting to cake rust. So I'm guessing I'm gonna need some uh, rust inhibitor and probably some antibacterial mix to go into this. There's my silicone. So I'm gonna pour it again and we're gonna see what happens. So then I wanted to give her one final test with the water actually in the pan, just to see if it made any difference. It should not have done that. I know what the problem was. I got grounded. And what do you know? When I actually ground the thing, That's it for now, guys. I still have a lot of work left to do on this.
this bad boy. So subscribe if you want to see more. Otherwise, check out one of these. Thanks for watching.